Good morning, my lovely Grisha. How are are you watching Sponge? Oh, all right. Anyway, man, stand up. We gotta do. We gotta do a review. One. Come Dude, on, stand leave up. Leave me alone. I'm tired. Come on, fuck off. I mean, as you want. I mean, we gotta review a uh, graffiti with eighteen by twenty three. Wait, wait what? what? Hold on, but hold on. If you don't want, you wait, don't want. Hold on. No problem. Dude, bye dude, bye. Dude. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Gladiators Tennis, and today we're reviewing the last model in the Gravity lineup, the Gravity Tour. Uh, something in between the MP and the Pro, that's what it should be. And you might be wondering, why are we not on tennis court like we usually are? And the answer to that is, we kind of forgot to film the intro, so here we are, in our house. Check out the specs. Okay, 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 okay. Grisha, here's yes. the racket. I think you can show a little bit more of activeness, no, for this racket than in the intro joke. So please. Uh, yeah, I mean, try. I know I'm gonna like it for sure because it's basically my racket, just a little bit lighter. And it all comes down to whether or not the stability is gonna be like enough for me, because it's probably a bit worse. <laughs> but yeah, uh, more power and stuff. So we'll see. All like right. always, check out the highlights. All right. Alrighty, so reviewing my racket of choice, but for those who can't really handle the weight. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's a great racket. And although it might seem like it, it's definitely not a gravity for those who can't handle the pro version. Because Arik struggled pretty much the same with the tour as he did with my pro. So, you know, the racket still feels quite rough on the arm. And in terms of power, although having more than the pro, it is not even close to the gravity MP. What's definitely much appreciated by me is the control that this frame provides you with. Awesome precision that allows you to confidently switch to down the line shots and a feel that for a 100 inch head is really good. Let's get into the shot analysis, starting with the backhand. So the Gravity Tour is more powerful than the Pro thanks to the thicker beam and a more head heavy balance. What does it mean for my backhand? Well, I can apply less power achieving the same depth and be more comfortable on the baseline because I know that my opponent won't be able to easily attack on a backhand to backhand rally. That's definitely really good. Now, attacking and switching down the line, I was missing that stability that I have with my pro, but honestly not a massive difference. Forehands, once again, very similar to my racket. So, you know, I was confidently attacking and finishing points within the first few shots. The shot that stood out the most was the inside-in forehand. I was nailing it every single time. That control that the 18 by 20 string pattern offers you is really sweet and the huge sweet spot allows for pretty big miscalculation. Unlike the Gravity Pro though, the tour doesn't obligate you to always stay aggressive and look for that winner opportunity. I often found myself saving certain shots in the defense with the forehands that I knew I would place in the net 100% sure with my bracket of choice. Moving on to the volleys, they felt absolutely horrible way worse than with my racket. I don't know if that's because I was missing that stability or because I just sucked at the net that day, but whatever the reason was, I didn't like it. Now, returning felt awesome. Unlike on the volleys, great stability on impact that allowed me to push Arik back with both my forehands and backhands returns, which unavoidably gave me that precious advantage very early in the point. Serves felt really good too. Did a couple of aces here and there, most of them being flat down the tee, though slicers felt really controlled as well. I could pretty much direct my serves wherever I wanted. On the second serves though, I was expecting a bit more from this one. Considering that it is more spin friendly and more powerful, I was expecting to be able to push my opponents a bit more with my kicks, but had no luck there. Still very average second serves. There is a solution to that though. Just don't end up having to serve second serves and destroy your opponents with the first serves. Who would I recommend this racket to? 
To those who like to play a very versatile game of tennis, switching between defense and offense, those who value control over power but don't want to compromise on the defense side of things. All right, so yeah. what do you think about this grip placement? Amazing and very clean, so I don't, don't want to touch it. But anyway, uh, the racket, I'm lately starting to like the design of the gravity uh -huh. line. Yeah? Uh, it's like it's not trying to be sporty or something like some other tennis rackets. It's, it's just like, class you know, Rolls Royce has this thin line all over the car, so it just yeah. makes it classy. It's the same. It, it's not trying to be something else. Okay, so, so BMW M3, you don't like that? Because it's sporty, that's why I don't yeah. like it. Yeah, that's why. Uh, I dream of it every day. But yeah, guys, please subscribe and like. That would get me a bit closer to the M3. So, yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Guys, guess what, Arik? Forgot to mention it again. Follow us on Instagram. Yeah. I'll put it here this time. Because he's right here next to me while I'm editing it, so I have no other choice. So now that you've subscribed and liked, and I can already smell the presence of my M3 in my garage, I can only say thank you and move on to the specs of this stiff, rock hard, arm breaking racket. I might give you a small hint about how I feel about this frame, but stay tuned because this isn't my final opinion. But well, you know, I'm a mysterious boy, so you gotta wait till the end to know my real thoughts about it. For now, let's talk specs. With its 100 inch square, head size, 300 grams and 18 by 20 string pattern, it has everything to be great racket for aggressive modern tennis. But then heads engineers thought, you know what would make it super better? Let's make it stiffer than a Nokia. So it's absolutely unusable. Ay, ay, ay. As I was being a drama queen because of this stiffness, I noticed that the control was outstanding. The ball was never flying away, so I was fully trusting on my shots. Therefore, I was taking bigger risks than usual, especially with my forehand. I went for down the line forehands from the baseline, which for me was like discovering a, a whole new world. <laughs> okay, because usually I don't feel confident enough with my speed MP to go for those kind of forehands. On the back end, it was the same story. Maybe it's not the best defending unlike me, <laughs> but if trying to play aggressively by combining powerful backhands and low slices, ooh, it becomes a heavy machinery as it can do any task you want. Let's go to the serve. On the first serve I had like a peace agreement with the net. I didn't bother him, he didn't bother me, so I didn't hit any serves to the net. And my first serve was giving me advantage which is a normal but not a normal thing when you're an Arik. So I was happy about that. Second serves were fine. To explain how good it is on the second serve, I'll have to talk about Grisha's playtest using his serve. That's how useful my playtest is. <laughs> uh, so when Grisha was using this frame, I was having a hard time returning his second serves as it was getting a lot of side bounce, making it hard for me to reach for the ball. I guess sometimes the best way of experiencing a racket is being on the other side of the court or at the net doing karate like moves like me <laughs> and finishing the points like I did. Volleying is easy with this frame. I felt like it was nimble and it was fun to direct the ball and block Grisha's fast uh, annoying bombs. The racket was so good that uh, thanks to my great memory of course, I completely forgot that at first the racket felt super stiff. As the time passed by, I got more and more busy enjoying its good qualities and starting to forget its bad qualities, like the stiffness or the lack of power, uh, but I just uh, named the bad qualities, so did I really forget? Anyway, uh, let's go to the greats. For the perfect return, it's only one trick, one trick. You just have to do that Squidward butt, you know? 